Hello there, trainers, and welcome to the first episode of Axie Tuesday, at least the first episode here on the official Axie Infinity channels. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be airing these every other Tuesday, so not every week. We're going to take a little time off, but every other Tuesday, we're going to be choosing another community member to chat with for a little bit, hear about their history, and dive deep into what they want to see in the Axie future. And first up, we've got a community member who's not only been slaying it recently in the streaming arena, uh, we got to meet him in New York. He's also got a very long and robust history with Axie Infinity that very much predates that of myself. Uh, we got Chuck Fresco here. Chuck, how are we? Welcome, buddy. Hello, everyone. I'm doing well. Just uh, here uh, with an Axie Tuesday. Um, I was actually surprised I got invited here, um, but I'm very honored to be here with Zaiori to just talk about one of my favorite topics, which is Axie Infinity. Yeah, so I want to go back to the roots here. I want to hear about how it started because I know you and Jiho have quite a history. So, like, how did you first discover Axie Infinity, and when was it? I mean, was it like 2018 era? Uh, yeah. So the other day I was actually researching because, like, you you're involved in a space for so long. Sometimes you forget when everything started. So basically, uh, back in 2018. Um, I was playing a game called Crypto Kitties. I had just bought my first ETH like at the start of January of that year. So January 2018. I bought ETH for the first time and I didn't know what to do with it. Like I'm saying, okay, I have ETH. My friend had told me about it. What do I do with this? And one of the first projects that was launching that was sort of tailored towards like people like me that like to game was Crypto Kitties. And in Crypto Kitties, uh, both me and Jiho, we met each other there. Because we were very competitive about breeding little <laughs> cats, as 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 silly as I meet sound right now, we were very competitive, and Jiho took it very seriously. So we formed a natural bond because we were considered like two of the best players in that game, uh, <laughs> as well as a top player could be. Is like you could just breed all these combinations and stuff. And so, was there anything limited about it? Like, were you fighting over the limited supply of different cats? Is that what, what kind of makes it something that you can fight over? Or is it just to be like the first one to come up with a new combination? The first one to come up with a new combination, oh, okay. uh, mainly because if you came up with a fancy, like they call it, a fancy was basically the combination of like certain genes that will create a completely different looking uh, crypto kitty um so it was really interesting the first one who got it would uh eventually reveal to everyone else what the combination was but at the time we were all just like trying to breed different things to figure it out mm -hmm. and then okay. there was no cap at the start but later on they did start making caps like after 50 of them you can't make any more of them so that was sort of the competition how many can you breed before you run out Gotcha. Okay, so you guys were like fighting against each other, but then as the legend goes, you guys joined forces and took over the Crypto Kitties community, right? Is that how is that right? Yeah, basically like me and Jiho like we we got to the point where there was this very special fancy. It was like a Chinese New Year dog cat. And I remember um it was really hard. The traits you needed to hit six traits that were all very different and di different breeding lines and we could have gone individually to try to breed it out. But at that point, Jiho and me were like, I think Jiho came up with the ideas like, why are we competing against each other when we can <laughs> unite and like obliterate everyone in this in the, getting these like, I think there was only like 30 cap on that specific fancy because it was very, very rare. So we joined together and wow. Jiho's like an awesome breeder and he used the, the stuff that I had, the cats that I had and his line and they just joined together and we got like, I feel like 15, 15 out of like the 30 cap or whatever. So we became like very, very like, <laughs> we <laughs> you guys were kidding on rollers. those dog cats. Yeah, it was crazy. And he <laughs> actually hit the first dog cat too, because we had supplies enough to breed that fast. And he hit the first one, which is really crazy for the game because everyone, every breeder, and a lot of the people you know in Axie were also in there. Um, the OGs, they were trying to breed this thing, but we just managed to get to the end. It was definitely a, a point wow. where it was better to join together than fight against each other. <laughs> yeah. So, but even back then, there was like this proof of concept for communities behind games and NFTs, right? Like, even though Crypto Kitties was this 
a very simplistic game, you guys took it seriously. You turned it into a competitive thing and you rallied behind it and it ended up being this this giant catalyst for these bonds to be forged. And then when Axie and all these other things start getting built mm-hmm. on top of it, some of that carries over. So like when Axie was born, like what was your impression of it? Did you think it was cool right away? Were you skeptical? Were you excited that you were friends with Jiho and that he was jumping onto the project? Did you know about it even before Jiho joined or was he your introduction? Uh, so so I guess you could say that Jiho definitely introduced a lot of the players from CryptoKitty. He already had he had jumped ship just because he had had issues in CryptoKitties. CryptoKitties reached to a point where the fancy chases weren't enough. Like, it reached a point where they believed a lot in the idea of like completely like decentralized, no no ownership from the gaming company. And uh, they okay. had no further ideas of developing more. They just said, this is for the community. That's how it's going to end. After a year, it's over. So a lot of people were really upset because we had these really cool assets, but nothing to do with them. And the project was basically indirectly going to die because of they were so stuck on the idea of decentralization that they couldn't think of actually building on top of it like actual gaming and stuff Mm -hmm. and so we were all looking for something we wanted to battle with our kitties we wanted to race with our kitties or do something with them but (laughs) they weren't giving us that and they were pretty blunt about it they were like no we're not going to go there this is this is the way we're going so jiho actually got kicked out and stuff of the of the of the was Discord. he a fudder? Was Jiho a fudder back in the day? He Is that was. What you're saying? He was just very upset, and he was telling <laughs> very real things to the community, and they didn't like that. And I was getting kicked out too. Like I didn't get kicked out, but Jiho did get kicked out of the Discord. Um, and wow. then in that motion, he <laughs> he started with 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 uh, Axie Infinity, which was like a blessing in disguise, like to to be moved over to another project like that. And from there, Axie, like we met uh, Trung, and Trung told us, um, Trung was telling all the new people, like, I'm starting this new game. Like, it's more about, like, it's like the breeding concept is still there, but I want to actually build a battle system with them. And my first impression of the Axies was like, they're kind of funny looking. Like, they look kind of potato ish in a sense. Um, it was very an interesting thing. But I said, the one thing that is, true about them is that they're unique. I have never seen anything like an Axie before. Like, it's not like something that someone copied from Pokemon or copied from them. The art style was very unique, something that was not replicated at that time. Isn't there some kind of weird genius in the parts that Axies are made out of where it's not just vegetables, it's not just fruits, but that's part of it. It's like kind of cutesy things. It's kind of random things. It's like the Trump hairdo. There's like memes mixed in there. It's actually... It's actually mm-hmm. pretty cool. And you start to attach yourself to the like the feeling. Like when I see Rosebud, I think, okay, healing. I don't care what mm-hmm. version of the game it is. That better give me some sort of restorative property because that's mm-hmm. what I see with it. Same with Pumpkin. Pumpkin is the brick wall, you know? Mm-hmm. And I can see all sorts of different acts. Even in like an Axie fighting game, Pumpkin yeah. should be like representative of a shield of some sort, uh, at least in, in my humble opinion. So uh, anyway, mm-hmm. I, I love that. It's so cool that even, you know, back when you were seeing them as internet potatoes you saw that uh that's yeah. that's great mm-hmm. and he just like just to continue on like so yeah. jiho brought us in he was he was like looking for community members he got like some of the top people in our other community he got like freak he got like cloud white he got me he got so many different people involved in axi because we all really wanted the next step we all wanted that next step, and we felt that Axie Infinity would give us that next step. It wasn't just breeding. It was actually going to have gameplay to it, right. and we were sold. We were sold on the idea. Maybe, there was a lot of projects promising the same thing, so maybe in a sense we got lucky, but <laughs> I know Jiho. I know Jiho. He doesn't like... He researches a lot, and he doesn't like to jump into things that are... Like, he knows that are, like, kind of dumb or whatever. <laughs> so, he was, if he was so sold on it, we were like, hmm, there must be something. You know, Jiho has a saying. He always says, or he used to say, no Jiho, no FOMO. So, if Jiho's not involved, there's not going to be any FOMO for that game. And wow. it kind of, it kind of com- has come out true in the past. Yeah. From what I've seen. Still, that, that's, a bold, uh, that's a bold statement. But I like the confidence. Like, that's the kind of guy you want to get behind, right? Uh, a natural sure. leader. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, 
uh, you get introduced into these internet potatoes. But back then, it's like there was just breeding and then auto battles came out. What was your impression of the auto battles version of Axie? To be honest, since there was nothing like it was like for me, I, I we actually enjoyed it as we, we enjoyed that we had something to play with, like that the parts actually mattered. Something's better parts, than nothing. Yeah. Okay. For sure. That the parts were actually connected to like a, a form of skill or strategy to use them. They couldn't just be used like whatever order, whatever part you, you had to find something very specific. So we liked the strategy behind it. But we we did feel like eventually like we just felt it was very limiting in some ways. We we didn't really have that interaction in the battle. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I I've also heard in, in my little bits of research and uh, the conversations we've had in the past that you are the winner of the first Axie tournament. What version of Axie did this take place in? Was this the card game or was this the auto battle game? This is the that was the first tournament for the new version of the game, so okay. the card battle, so V two, like like people like to call it now, All right. version two. And game. like, what season are we talking about here? Like season one, season two, uh, alpha. I think I think this was precursor to season one. So the tournament wow. was going to be the season like, zero, we, season zero, uh, season zero. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> it was like basically uh, they had released the card game. People were testing it, and just to like start up everyone ex ex excitement. They were gonna do this tournament called the Infinity Cup, ah, okay. and there was a lot of things on the line on that one uh, because they had a token called Luna, and for a lot of people who don't know, Luna actually became AXX later on in time. But they were offering three thousand Luna for the first place winner, and it wasn't a lot back then. But if you were to do the transfer today, it'd be worth like almost three hundred thousand dollars just from winning that tournament say that, that's the luna token that's like yeah, mm -hmm. fifty dollars right now right it's the same luna correct it's the same uh luna no 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 not luna luna no no it is the same one AXX. yeah same one so yeah mm -hmm. so they just called it luna but then they converted all the luna to become axx later on and wow yeah yeah so at one point you know axx hit 150 so that was almost worth five hundred thousand dollars that original like 3000 wow. axx that you won so it was very crazy okay i knew there was something up when people were telling me like use your luna to buy land and i was like i just don't want to sell it why would i why would i use it like i just want to hold it like i'm a i'm such a big holder on things mm -hmm. and since they were so persistently trying to get us to use it i'm like you know what i'm gonna do the opposite i'm just gonna hold it and see what happens and i think it ended up playing out <laughs> well for me in the end do you have land though are, are you a land guy Oh yeah, I bought land as well. I just didn't touch the Luna. That's the thing. I okay. used my Ethereum to buy land, but Luna, I just was like, there's something odd about the way they're treating this token. And I was like, I remember Jiho was like, yeah, use it for land, use it for whatever. And I was like, what if I don't? And then he didn't really have a good answer for me. So I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hold it, whatever. And that's what I did with AOC as well. I got some AOC, I never rolled it. I still have AOC. How many are we talking here? Like, how, how many mystics are we looking to roll before the end of time? Uh, I only got two chances. So I have 10 AOC right now. Okay. Um, I have two and, and a I half. Want to, and one huh? of my other friends has two and a half. So I, no I way, can roll half. Enough. Yeah, exactly. To get, we went 50-50 on five AOC. So yeah. I'm, I'm with oh you on God. that. We're gonna hold it forever, I think. But. I that, love the idea, crazy. the potential of knowing that you could roll the last mystic. I love that. It's so cool. It, it's insane. It's insane. Um, back then, I, it was easy to roll it, but I was like, I'd like to just save some. It's like part of history. Might as well save some of the AOC. And then for the, I, I had five AOC, but then I went back and like I looked through everyone's account to try to like bring back all the AOCs to get one more uh, like another another chance to do it so i i contacted like everyone on discord i could find to buy an aoc and little by little i was able to piece it all together to find like you know how there's like an infinity gauntlet like it felt <laughs> like i just like finally got all the stones and like was able to to collect <laughs> enough to make one uh, one origin axi um, whether it's mystic or not i'm not sure that's gonna be like up to luck and probability but you know i I, it was a fun ex adventure for me to like seek out all these AOC holders and like just bring them all, bring it all back together. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. It, it's like a digital scavenger hunt in a way. Yeah, and um, 
I think like that's one of the exciting things about crypto is the potential, right? And the future and the prospects. And that's like, you can see the sentiment in projects where certainly people love when things are delivered and when they can actually get their hands on stuff. But people yeah. also buy into hype and the future and the dream. Um, and speaking of the dream, like for land, did you did you buy it when it was in the chest form or did you just buy it on the market after a lot of it was was rolled? Yeah, for, for a lot of these projects, whenever um, Axie releases something new, I tend to just buy. Like, I just enjoy the product so much um, that I just buy. Like, so I bought it during the chess mode, definitely. Mm, okay. Yeah, because that's one thing I've always thought about. Like, man, I wish I could have gotten land early. But back then, I don't know that I would have bought it. You know, like, I yeah. presented the option. It, it, it was such a foreign concept to me. And that idea of buying the pixel on this promise of a future land plot and just the idea of what it could look like. I don't know. I, I just don't think it would have seemed there's no way I would have bought a mystic one, right? A whole Ethereum back then. Like I was just looking back at do you remember mm -hmm. your first crypto transaction? I think mine was I bought 0.3 Ethereum, 0.35 Ethereum worth like a hundred bucks in August of 2017. I think that might have mm -hmm. been my first crypto purchase. I don't remember the exact one. I would need to check my Coinbase, but I'm sure it's there somewhere. Um, I'm yeah. located, you know, in the history books of what it was. But it wasn't that big of an amount. I remember it was it was very little enough to buy myself a few Crypto Kitties. I feel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it was around that like Crypto Kitty time frame. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's so cool. I feel like it reinforces the general thesis of why we're here. That being able to do stuff is what's really exciting. And as more things get built on blockchain, it's just going to continue to attract more and more users because there's mm -hmm. just more going on. It appeals to a wider demographic of users, and that's like yeah. the potential of Axie that gets me so excited. All these other games, that, like that's why I bought Land was really for the mm -hmm. SDK aspect, this ability to build on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like it's definitely like a lot of people say like, oh, all these OG people like like they they made this investment a long time ago, like whatever, whatever. But there's like a huge risk that you put into like when the game is not that big, like buying like AOC tokens, buying land when it really like first released, there was a huge risk. It could have never happened. Land could never be delivered. Technically, land is still not out yet. It's being worked on, but there's this huge risk you take and mm -hmm. some people don't like that risk but if you don't like that risk you can't complain about someone else taking that risk and right. it going well for them you know it's it's just like it's almost unfair to the person who invested not knowing the future like not you know anything could happen in crypto and yeah. but a lot of us really believe that 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 Axie Infinity can deliver on what they're saying maybe they can't deliver as fast as you would want them to deliver. <laughs> That's the difference. But if you have patience, Axie will almost always release a really top quality product. Like I've always seen that. Even the times that I've been scared, like when I was scared about land, Cloudwhite was out there buying up all the land. Cloudwhite is one of the OGs. He would buy up all this land. He and I would be scared. I'd be like, Cloudwhite, you're buying a, like a lot of land here. And I feel foolish now because Cloudwhite took that risk and he like he has so much land now i can't imagine how much it is total in like ethereum but he took that risk he made yeah. he made the effort he went to buy land some people called him foolish for doing it but you know um shout like shout out to cloud white and respect to cloud white he was sold on the vision he wanted to do it that way and i i just respect him like i said i i wish i could have changed back things but he definitely took the risk and he gets the reward for sure on that one. I mean, that's that's the hardest part. Even I, like knowing these trends started falling into some of that psychology in this last dip, you know, this kind of mini bear market that we saw in January. Yeah. It's starting to recover now, but you start to wonder like, wow, it can fall really fast. I, I wonder if it can recover just as quickly. And depending on who you talk to, um, mm. you know, you start thinking like, wow, I want to... I want to switch some stuff into like stable coins to prevent losses, but then you also start losing out on gains and yeah. it's hard to buy after you've lost a, a bunch of money and value of whatever it is, your AXS, your Ethereum, your RON, your SLP, like when the whole market crashes, it feels like it reduces your buying power and it's really mm -hmm. scary. Um, it, and, it, it is. Um, the reason like if I could just go a little please. off topic, hopefully yeah. not. Um, the reason why a lot of us OGs, like people who were here, when when Axie started, can bear a lot of these things better than other than other people, like more new players, 
is that when Axie launched, Bitcoin and Ethereum crashed shortly after from like Bitcoin crashed from like 19,000, almost 20,000 down to 5,500. It was a crazy crash. And also around that time, Ethereum yeah. was at 1,200 and it crashed all the way down to a hundred dollars. Like these crashes were like almost 80%, like people completely wiped down. Uh, but That's Jiho insane. taught me something a long time ago. Oh. He told me if you only lose, if you sell, like you only lose if you sell at a loss. Mm -hmm. But if you believe in what you have, then just hold it. Cause you're going to lose anyways. Like the money's already gone anyways. So he always like, he's such a big holder and his, his mentality to hold on a lot of these things he believes in has really saved him from making a bad decision or a, an emotional decision mm -hmm. and just like selling out and then everything just picked up. And as you guys know, when it hit 100, it like bounced right up a afterwards almost. Like it took a little while, but it Ethereum has been zooming back to like crazy numbers after that point. And because a lot of us saw this crash, like this is one thing I love about Axie Infinity. When things were going bad in that time, all these projects said, we're the next crypto kitty. We're the next this. We're the next best blockchain game. We're going to do all this. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they would call shots on Axie Infinity saying like, we're bigger. We're a bigger company. We have more things than Axie Infinity. And they were all fighting each other at that time to become like the best game uh, going forward. So when that was happening, the crash happened. And a lot of these companies that started with Axie Infinity, a lot of them just gave out their announcements on their Discord or whatever, saying like, we're sorry, the economy is not good. Like, it's not feasible to continue with this project because there's we don't know how long the bear market is going to last. Yeah. The thing that Axie did, I'm sure all of them were terrified too, or nervous at least. But the thing Axie did, they continued forward. Like, they kept building. They kept working towards releasing the actual product. They didn't just take everyone's money and run out the door. They were there to really build this project. Trung and Masamune had this vision for this game. And they just kept building, building, building through that. Jiho and Saika could have just said, you know what? This is too much for me. I'm out. Like, I'm going to bail. But they stayed on, like, knowing that you don't really know the future. It, it could never recover. But they just stayed on. And that's what I love about Axie Infinity is that they have a team that's willing to just, they really want to sell, like, really want to work on this project and deliver what they're asking or what they're telling us they're going to do to a bear market. It was easy for Axie to say the same thing as all these other companies. Like, let's get out of here. Like, it's over. Trunk could have said, like, no, it's not worth my time anymore. Like, we already made our money during the sale of AOC. But that didn't happen. Trung, Trung believes in bigger things. And he believes that there was something more to this project. And he continued it on. And it, it, it was true testament to a lot of us early players that Axie is willing to go through that bear market. Axie is willing to go, <laughs> go through it. Like, it's insane. Like, that's what brings confidence to me mm. when I play Axie is like, they just have this core team that's just so solid Man. and stuff. And Jiho, of course, with the personality he has... He kept us going through it. Like he kept the community like as positive as possible. You know, when things are going bad, it's hard to get everyone positive. But we we just stuck stuck around. A lot of us yeah. OGs stuck around. It was very very, um, like I said, it's just very inspirational to see that. And and my respects to Axie. A lot of new teams want to be like Axie Infinity, but you're truly tested when there's a bear market. Like your team is truly tested when you're in there and Axie got like a first, like the worst crash I've seen in my time in crypto and they were able to survive it. Mm -hmm. And so now this crash that happened right now, yes, it was like a 40% correction, if not 50% in some, yeah. some areas, but we've seen worse. Like I said, we've seen 80%. We've oh, seen yeah. like it, it oh, collapsed yeah. like crazy. So a lot of us are like, uh, oh, 40% drops. Like this that's happens. that's this no, is just it's, turbulence. It's crypto. It's crypto. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like it could it could crash forty percent. It can go up like four hundred percent. Like it, it's just yeah. insane. Like that's why I always tell people: if you're investing in crypto, know that it can all go to zero. Know that that's a reality. Know that it's a risky investment. Um, but if you're okay with that, like not everyone has that in them. Not everyone has that like feeling like they can bear like their market going down like that. Uh, and if you're that person, it's probably not the best thing to be in because 
it's bad for your health, obviously. Yeah. But if you feel like you have that uh, ability to bear those kind of like one of the things I do whenever there's a bear market, I go and do something else. I don't try to play like I don't try to be <laughs> like watching my wallet. Wallet's the worst thing you can do. You're gonna be yeah. you're gonna be ma- motivating yourself or pulling yourself to making an emotional decision. So whenever there's a crash, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go like work or do something else because I still keep my nine to five job, even though like. Jiho has told me a lot of times, you could probably retire on Axie. I'm like, nah, I'm just going to keep working my nine to five. Like, it's a good job. I feel like it's not the worst. Yeah, play um, it safe. And having a sense of purpose is good. You know, it's of course, definitely... of course, of course. And during those bad times, then I'm just busy working, doing my work. Yeah. And, and I could bear the market. Like I said, I could bear like the, the <laughs> collapses and stuff, everyone going crazy. Uh, doomsday totally. yeah um but like i said i it's just a different mentality for a lot of the early players that's why when people get all shook up now like the new community hasn't experienced that and th- i think this was the first time they actually experienced it but a lot of us ogs were like you know we know axie is going to release this land maybe not fast but they're going to release the land they're going to release and the, origin the, yeah or battles which i'm really excited for that's the one like land is awesome it looks like it might be delayed a little bit longer, but Origin seems like it's just right around the corner. And that's what I'm really excited about. I'd love to play battles in Axie Infinity. Mm-hmm. So that's when I really want to play a lot. Like that's when I, I wanted to play so badly. Totally, dude. No, that's uh, I, I share that excitement. And um, man, I, I appreciate the kind words and you know, like very well said. I, I agree with uh, a lot of what you said about Axie and their history and what they built through and how much... Uh, how respectable that is. And that's ultimately like why I joined the team after talking to all of Mm -hmm. the co-founders and especially Trung and seeing the dedication and uh, the thoughtfulness towards the vision and the ability to really think long term about the potential of this thing and really hammer home the Axie as a universe and a platform and this workshop where the community can build things and integrate it into the universe and we can all monetize it together and have this really cool interactive experience that's part of the metaverse and um Mm -hmm. yeah it just it it warms my heart a little bit to hear other people say that because i i missed a lot of that you know i saw axie really early in like 2018 and went wow this game looks really cool and then got distracted with dota and various other stuff uh, in the real world you know running events and all sorts of Mm -hmm. stuff so um yeah i i regret missing it a little bit i wish i had put one foot on base and just paid a little more attention i i know it sounds like fantastical Mm -hmm. now but i had on my to-do list it, like investigate axie infinity for probably six months uh, after i talked to wow, alex wow, wow. and he gifted me some axes in whatever 2018 and then mm-hmm. um yeah after a while i just went am i ever really gonna do that nah i don't know and you know how it is it's like sometimes you just get lazy with stuff like that and you don't know what you're missing until you either dive in or you get in later and then look back and go wow i had this great opportunity and just you know yeah didn't it, do it. I don't have a great excuse. I just didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly, I love that you joined the team. Um, there's been times when, when I was like, maybe I should join the team too. Like, maybe I should do it. Um, but I, I just, like, my personality is so crazy. And Trung knows this. Like, I, I could be a good, like, obedient worker. Like, I can. But then I go crazy sometimes. So, like, I, I believe there's a story where in the early days... Jihil was like talking to Trung, like, what do you think about the idea of making Chuck part of like the core team or whatever? And Trung was like, he thought about it actually. He was like thinking about the idea. And he's <laughs> like, no, it's probably not better for it. <laughs> and I always laugh. But what I love to work with Axie, I, I do. And and like a lot of times I feel like I'm so interconnected with like a lot of the the core team. Like I know a lot of them. I used mm-hmm. to talk with Trung. I owe him tacos, fish tacos and stuff if he ever comes to LA. But I'm just <laughs> so interconnected with a lot of them from the early days that I mean the transition to core team someday may be a reality, but like I said, when I was younger, I was much more crazy for sure. I said a lot of things I shouldn't say on Discord. Uh, I should have gotten banned probably a, a few times in there. Um, yeah, but, but you know, we all grow, and I think yeah. like, acknowledging it and recognizing it, and like committing to doing better in the future, is really mm-hmm. what it's all about. Like that Axie code of conduct is a very real thing, and as we yeah. keep building towards DAO, we need more community leaders that are willing to kind of 
just say what you just said. I mean, that alone is is really powerful. I hope you recognize that. You know, saying like, mm-hmm. "Hey, I I did stuff in the past that I kind of regret, or I definitely wouldn't do now." And mm-hmm. uh, it's it's admirable to to be worried about that. But I think demonstrating that also shows like, well, hey, maybe maybe this guy is like. Maybe it's forgivable, you know. Maybe we can move on and bury the hatchet and see what else uh, old Chuck Fresco brings to the table. Like I, it's, it was it was so incredible when I went to like uh, one of the biggest reasons. Like there was a point, like shortly after I won the world championship and I won season two of Axie Infinity, there was a point where I reached the point where I really felt like, what is there left to do here? This was before scholarships or anything. <laughs> I've done it. Like, all. This was before everything. Like I was like. What is there left for me to do? I've literally beaten everyone here. I've literally won season two, which in history record, there's only 19 season winners. And I'm like one of them or whatever. So yeah. historically, like, I'm like, what is there left for me to do? If there would have been scholarships, maybe I would have stayed. But because I was winning so much, I was like top five in like the first five seasons. Like people started growing animosity towards me. I, I started noticing it more. And a lot of the mods that became mods at the time um, were actually players themselves. So they had dealt with me before and they were just like, (laughs) they were always trying to ban me. I would get messages, DMs about me, like potentially getting banned and stuff. And eventually, eventually I just came to the realization that like in Batman, if you, if you ever watched the dark Knight, there's a quote from Bruce Wayne and I, and I might, I might butcher it right here, but it says like, you either die a hero or live long enough to become the villain himself. So I just felt like that was my my situation at the time. I either took a break from Axie, uh, took a break from the community and move on to do other things for the moment. Cause I was just really becoming like almost a toxic person like to the whole community. Um, people weren't able to compete with me that well cause they were losing a lot and getting discouraged. So I told Jiho like, I think I'm gonna take a break from the game. like. There was a lot of things going on in my life at the same time Mm -hmm. during that time, like family, friends that I was like, you know, I need to take a step back from like, like competitively playing an arena. And, and yeah, I took a break and I told Jiho, Jiho was like, legitly sad, like sad. He said, he later on told me he cried a little bit that night, (laughs) maybe a lot of dramatization. But I'd like to see um, that reenactment. I mean, this is like Axie uh, history right here. The night that know, Jiho no. cried because <laughs> Chuck Fresco cried. moved on. <laughs> it's because we were so together. We were we had such a strong bond, and we do have a strong bond. Um, and I was so involved in the early days that you know you you grow an attachment to like the OG players, like because they were there at the start. And he was sad. He was like, "Don't go, bro. Don't go." And <laughs> maybe I'm dramatizing that a little bit in my head, but basically, uh, he was sad that I left. Um, They understood it, um, that I probably needed to leave for a while (laughs) because I was this close on getting banned, I feel. And so I moved on. Like, I moved uh, to do my regular world life. A year and a half passed almost in that time period. When uh, And in that time, scholarships started getting developed. Mm -hmm. A lot of new players came up that were very, very good competitively. Like, the meta changed completely from when I played. Uh, We started getting players like Indez... Elijah, all these different top players now. There's so many now that I can't even name them. Yeah. But I remember one thing that Indes, me and Indes sometimes talk, like very little on Discord sometimes. But I remember him telling me that he remembers me playing in the tournament, the big tournament, the Infinity Cup. He remembers watching me winning the Infinity Cup. And low key, I feel like indirectly without realizing it, I was inspiring a lot of these players that would later come up to become like even better by me taunting them and playing against them so aggressively. <laughs> they started caring about p- playing better yeah. before you, everyone was just casually playing. Like, you know, dude, you gave them a ca- sense of purpose. You created the yeah, storyline. You gave them like a, a little clap, like little, like good, <laughs> you know how like baseball, like T-ball games go like good game, good game. Everyone's, everyone's a winner. Yeah. I was like, no. I want to destroy all of you guys. Like, I'm not your friend. I'm your, I'm the best player. <laughs> you have to beat me in order to claim that title. And like everyone in the arena discord channel was like gunning to beat me. Everyone wanted to beat me so bad. <laughs> just maybe just I to shut it. me up for once. And so a lot of these players like just started getting inspired. So I, I feel like I indirectly inspired Indes 
and Indes indirectly inspired Elijah. So there's like a lineage. <laughs> I like that. No, I love it, dude. There, there's definitely some truth to that, though. You create ripple effects, and like, there's a whole art to that. It's like in professional wrestling, they call that being the heel, right? You got to have the, the heel, bad the heel, guy yes. for yeah. like, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin's got to beat up somebody. Right? Somebody's got to be that dude that comes in and is just like, I don't like you. I don't like what you do. And I'm taking <laughs> you out. You know, you got to have like somebody to rally behind. So um, that's actually really cool, man. That's something that a lot of people aren't willing to do. And that's so awesome. And I can see just like by the way you tell that story, it's like you enjoyed it. You get a sense of pride out of it it's, it was fun to uh you know be at the top and then kind of stick it to him yeah and there was like there's a story from N nyc nf uh, nyc nft or nft nyc um i remember like like a lot of for a long time when i left the game i just felt like like no one likes me in this community everyone dislikes me <laughs> and obviously for cause but when i went to nft nyc like I come to realize that a lot of people, like, I was the first person that actually talked to them on the Discord. I was the first person who, like, you know, communicated with them. A lot of people don't realize. I was mean to the competitive people, but to the newbies, I was actually really nice. And a lot of them, like, went up to me during events. They wanted to shake my hand, talk to me. One person called Crumb, like, there's a picture I posted on Twitter. He literally was about to leave the event, but he really had wanted to talk to me. And guess what he wanted to talk to me about? Like, he told me, like, I know you. Like, I know you, Chuck Fresco. He's like, we used to battle each other. And I was like, what? Like, we did? Like, I had no idea. Like, I'm sorry. I Hopefully, I said, I hope I haven't been bad or something like that. And he's like, no, like, like you would beat me sometimes. And then I would beat you. And then you would say, like, because we would we would like reply to each other on the discord and whenever we beat each other and i would he would when i would get loose i would get mad at myself but i would reply back to him when he's taunting back me back i would tell him like oh i'm just farming bro like i'm just farming like i'm not playing for real <laughs> <laughs> and crumb like was like he was just so like filled with like joy i almost felt like remembering these things that he actually beat the world champ at the time in like arena and stuff and it like it was a really good moment it made me realize like throughout nft nyc i realized that my influence wasn't completely negative like i originally yeah. foresaw like a lot of people actually viewed me as the champion and stuff from the og from the original like nowadays like indes is like the champion like uh, mm -hmm. or elijah is the champ depending if you're talking about arena sure. or like competitive tournaments and stuff but like i was the og champion i feel like you could say and I was talking to Jiho, I was like, even if I play competitive now, like, I can't beat these monsters. These monsters are so good. And he's like, you don't need to beat them, bro, he told me. And I was like, why? He's like, because you're like the Babe Ruth of Axie. Like, you're the original. Like, you're the one, like, there's different eras to Axie. And you were just the best player in this era, in the starting era. You were the, like, things change. You know, baseball, everything mm -hmm. changes. Like, the mm -hmm. mechanics, people get better. There's better trainers. There's better logic or strategy. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. But he was like, you're like the Babe Ruth. And I was like, you know what? I think I am. Like, that That makes sense to me. Um, can I compete with the new people? Probably not. But I'm in the top 1,000 right now. So yeah, you just have to stand your ground, right? Like, you don't yeah. have to win every tournament, but you just have to win a couple of tournaments, right? You uh, upset yeah, Indez yeah. once at one key moment, you know, some AxiCon qualifier, and in comes Chuck Fresco and knocks out Elijah in the first round. Like, I don't know. That, like, you don't have to win the tournament to send Indes to the lower bracket. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! And uh, no, I think like don't don't sell yourself mine. short, dude. Yeah, totally. You can get in there. There's it's a whole spectrum of competition. That's the great thing about esports. It's not just about getting first. It's about the journey of aspiring for first, believing that mm -hmm. you can do it. But um, that every point of the competition has potential for like really exciting storylines and even to make big plays, you know, like pull out axes that are unconventional mm -hmm. or, you know, do things that are unexpected or set a trap that somebody falls into. Like all of these things are ways that you can stand out as a player and like have mm -hmm. that reputation. is just like, Oh, that Chuck Fresco, you know, that's uh anyway, and food, food you wouldn't for believe it. You wouldn't believe it. I act the last time me and Indes ever matched up in arena which was like, let's say, six months ago or something like that. I had just started back into playing Arena. Um, I actually got the win on him. Like, that was, like, surprising for me. Uh-oh. And, uh, and, like, Indez, I think... Uh, 
He's watching right I, now, I, just like boiling over, just like I'm oh coming for I'm you, sorry, Chuck Prescott. I, I just had a, I, I won the game, and I was very <laughs> surprised because Innes is supposed to be good. Um, but I think I won that game later on. I think he did beat me again, but I think the last time, I, in my memory, obviously is biased. Um, but I think I do have a win record on him from the past <laughs> yeah but you never know like if i were to play him now he'd destroy me like there's no there's no question that guy's a monster <laughs> yeah, i have to set up a show match we have to start building like some sort of friday night like fights kind of a show match series so we can start reigniting some of these old rivalries you know set the mm -hmm. stage for you to upset indes with low stakes no, oh my god <laughs> i have nothing to lose that's what i always thought i have nothing to lose and everything to gain in that kind of matchup that's why I would only want to match up with him if it's in a tournament or something where, like, it's for real. Like, because I feel like in the other side, he's at a disadvantage. Because if he wins, he's supposed to win. If he loses, then he, he looks so bad for him. Like, it's, so true. it's just a bad situation. Yeah, you know? be, being the underdog is definitely everything to gain in that kind of matchup. That's why I would only want to match up with him if it's in a tournament or something where, like, it's for real. Like, because I feel like in the other side, He's at a disadvantage because if he wins, he's supposed to win. If he loses, then he, he looks so bad for him. Like it's, so it's just a bad situation. Yeah, you know? be, being the underdog is definitely easier from that lens. Um, for sure. But for sure. I mean, dude, with the new rewards in the arena season, like I wonder at what point it's going to be worth it for old Chuck Chuck Fresco to hang up his nine to five hat and just become an arena warrior. I mean, like paying down to three hundred thousand places is cool. But like the pricing is getting serious, especially like AXS mm -hmm. has been going up since we announced that. Like there's a world where by, by the end of season 20, AXS could be up even a little bit more. Yeah. It's not a bad payday, dude. It, it almost becomes worth it. And now there's more tournaments to compete in as well. Like at what is there yeah. a point where the ecosystem for Axie Esports, like especially around Origin, becomes robust enough that you you would consider being like a full-time player or even like just like a full-time streamer that's that's more competitive because if you're top mm -hmm. 1000 right now i don't yeah. know man I, I feel like i'd be twirling my mustache like world domination is just a few steps away yeah a lot of people don't realize i've actually been playing like in on on so they can see my teams like think i've been playing on twitch a bit more like i used to play with teams that i like even though they're not meta teams but i just started adding a few meta teams to my lineups obviously adding a no, my own twist to them but i've been ranking up little by little like a lot of like it's it's been it's been a little bit interesting like i was so like anti using a meta team but once i started using a little bit of the, of the pieces from meta teams i can see my like mmr just like jumping up little by little like by little by little the more matches i play i've been playing like 60 energy for the last two weeks almost like oh, just wow. consistently playing like a lot Dude, of people are like training, Why? you're ready for this season I, I, w I want to wouldn't it be a great thing for the person who won season two to also win season 20 of axe infinity what Ooh. what a what a what a journey that would be and dude, stuff. I mean, now that's obviously, a story. now that's a follow up interview right there dude if you pull that <laughs> off welcome back I mean that's uh, that would be so cool and yeah. what's crazy is you could do it too. It's possible. I know it's possible. I know it'll be hard and it'll be time consuming, but there's a chance. There's a non zero chance that Chuck Fresco takes position one in season 20. <laughs> I want this story to be real, dude. Wow. The yeah, competition's going to be fierce, though. This, this one, it's, it's going to be insane. Like, I, I started a scholarship because, like, I like to learn all aspects of Axie. Like scholarship was one I never got into when I, when I, when I left. It wasn't even a thing. But when I came back, I was like, I want to start a scholarship, not for the financial reason for it. Like a lot of people like get scholarship because they want a financial thing. I wanted to start a scholarship to understand how it all works and stuff. And and that's why I, I pay my scholars like a lot. Like they probably got paid more than I ever made on the scholarship. Um, but I wanted to learn, like, how do you actually do that? How do you make these other Ronin accounts and then use them with Trezor? So I feel like I learned a lot doing a scholarship and and my scholarship because of the rewards obviously has to adapt. Mm -hmm. I feel like the term scholarship is probably going to come to an end in the future. It's going to be more guilds or like people who want to play the game. I think a lot of times mm -hmm. scholarships got started with the mentality that you want to play to earn or do you want to just earn? It just became earn earn basically you don't no longer really <laughs> wanted to play the game you wanted to farm adventure non-stop adventure mode but you a lot of the people who were farming 
never got past adventure mode. They never learned any of the mechanics of the game. And now that, that this change is happening, a lot of them are in a bad situation because they're like, I don't know how to play competitive. Like, I don't know how to play the game. Um, right. And it's just it's just really bad. I feel like adventure mode costs two bad things to happen. One, it created like this environment where you have a whole whole group of people who never learned any of the mechanics of the game because you could just play the cards um, and you would win basically. And mm-hmm. another generation, another thing it caused is just caused this mentality of play to earn to move away from play, like from actually playing the game. So like a lot it of the people be that, like a compete to earn kind of a thing. Yeah, like yeah. like actually playing the game. So a lot of people I hear on Twitter, and I'll, I'll say this, you can remove it later if you like. A lot of people on Twitter like say like I invested in Axie Infinity, and like this game is an ish or whatever game. Like it's a terrible. They say a lot of bad words. Obviously, like in my mindset, I'm like thinking, why did you invest? in something that you don't even like. Like, why do you, why would you do that? You should invest in something you actually enjoy. And that's the thing I, I, I find ironic. Like you're bad mouthing the game, but you yourself, like you invested in this. We, you made an, a choice that you wanted to get into this. Maybe you, you went into it just to make money, but like with everything in crypto, like things can go up, things can go down. That's the reality of life. Like. Yeah. And if you didn't even enjoy the game, you invested in just to, like, I don't know how you say it, like, to just jump the price, just to buy it and, yeah, like, make a lot of money. Like, it's get a finan- purely yeah, a financial incentive, not because you actually care about like, what, what's happening in the underlying game. And I, I, I do think you're right. And I think that's mm-hmm. why we're now seeing this shift from play to earn to play and earn. And earn you know, yeah. it's much more focused on the play part where there's an earning component at the side. And obviously, if you're a competitive player and you're ahead of the curve and you can, you know, breed mm-hmm. stuff along with the cutting edge meta, there's absolutely ways that you can make money in the economy as you can in a lot of other games out there as well. But in our world, yeah. it's just a little more easy, a little more streamlined, and it, it's like part of the system, right? Everything is designed to be able to be sold on the Axie marketplace. So um, yeah. yeah, I firmly believe that you should be buying things that you in, believe in, you know, and invest, yeah, like for sure. enjoy. And as you said earlier, when the bear market hits, it's much easier to hold through when it's like, well, I still like this thing anyway. So yeah. I hope it goes back up. But if it doesn't, at least I have this thing that I can kind of like i remember why i bought it i have a memory attached to it um that's mm. that's been my strategy at least that, that's how yeah. i sleep at night when when things go down <laughs> yeah no it, it's definitely like even in investing in stocks and stuff like one thing i learned from jiho like i've learned a lot from him that guy that guy's real he's even before he started investing in crypto he was a really good investor in stocks mm. and it translates here very well too um so he told me like invest in things you use, invest in things you like. And so some of the stocks I love are Tesla. I love like Apple because those are products I use a lot. Um, and I just invest in things I like. Like why would I invest in something like for example, not not to hate on Dogecoin people. Like people love Dogecoin and I know they have a community and stuff. Not a Doge guy. Not like <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of people got into Dogecoin at 70 cents because the media and everyone was saying like Dogecoin has become the next Bitcoin. It's going to be so crazy. And then the guess one dollar psychology gets real too. Like we're going yeah, to one dollar. Yeah. We're going to one dollar, and it's like and that, that's arbitrary. It was going. Right? It was going yeah. Everyone was getting hype. Dogecoin only grows when there's hype. So once the hype died at seventy whatever cents, collapse all the way down to like whatever it is right now, fourteen cents and stuff. Mm-hmm. But they weren't investing because they like Dogecoin. They invested because they thought it could go higher. Like they're just trying to get rich quickly. And sometimes that's really gonna, that's gonna hurt you a lot. Invest in things you love, cause that's really gonna help you. Mm-hmm. Like I, to say I love Axie, I think that's a very fair, fair, fair statement. Like I love Axie Infinity. I love the game. I love the team. Um, maybe everyone doesn't love them, but I'm investing wow. in Axie Infinity because I really enjoy their product. Like, like they, they created, like this is another thing I've always think is crazy. Um, Axie Infinity tried to go through another system to do like second layer or do a faster way of doing transactions outside of the Ethereum blockchain. Mm -hmm. They tried to go with another company called Loom, I believe, in the past. Mm -hmm. And Loom was, uh, I'm not sure if Loom is the name, 
I think Please it is correct. Yep, I yeah. think you're right. So they try to go through Loom because Loom was supposed to provide them like games with the ability to transact faster, to go through all these things. Um, and Axie Infinity joined up with them. The problem is Loom's developers were eventually slowing down Axie's progress, mm -hmm. eventually to the point where Loom gave up on the idea completely or moved another way. And that left Axie in a bad situation. Like they had depended on these guys, yeah. but their system, they weren't as, as passionate as they were, or they weren't as like, they weren't on the same mindset about the future of their product. So then Axie was left in a bad situation. Loom was about to end. And guess what Axie does? And this, this really pu pushed them back a long time, but they made their own completely different Ronin network. Like they completely developed all of this. And it was insane, like to to think like how well uh, Ronin works, how efficient it is, how our game has moved away from Ethereum transactions. Like, imagine having to claim your SLP and it costing you twenty dollars to do it on the Ethereum network. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist because they created Ronin. They completely did it themselves because Ronin now tailors towards what Axie needs, not what Loom needed. And that's just amazing. Like, it shows the potential and the the tech that Axie works with. They're definitely pioneers in this whole crypto space. And I think Trunk is recognized as one of the best developers in blockchain and contracts and stuff. He's like an insane, yeah. he's like a genius guy. He's younger than me. He's such a genius. And I, I'm, I'm always like amazed by that. People don't like, people don't recognize like when Ronin comes out, like they say like, oh, that's cool. Like they don't, they don't realize how hard it is to do this, how hard it is to add secure things to it. Because, like, a lot of projects release their product, and then it gets hacked. And then you get into this whole problem where everything collapses because they got hacked. But, like, the Axie team just takes their time. And sometimes taking your time is the best approach for these things. Taking your time to release a quality product takes time. It just... In this space, it's them really take... important. Yeah, it's yeah, like security sure. is paramount. And you have to build security into everything because your mm. user account is your wallet. So that's, yeah. like, that's really awesome and really convenient. But wow, that's a lot of responsibility. And I, sure. I agree with you completely. I would much prefer to have security be the number one priority over speed. It, it helps me sleep at night. You know, I, I've sure. got a lot of stuff on Ronin. I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a believer. I uh, certainly mm -hmm. don't want to lose those assets, dude. I, uh, yeah. I feel attached to them. You know, I've got Axie mm -hmm. art on my wall. I look at my, my four favorite Axies. I look at them every day. I look at my Mystic every day, Chuck, at least every day that I'm home, at least. Yeah, you know, and it makes me feel weird sometimes, but I, I do feel attached to these things like actual mm -hmm. digital pets. You know, it's not the same as a real pet, but there's mm -hmm. there's some spectrum that exists there. You know, it gives you a partial pet dopamine hit for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I, I have my mystics too. Um, I need to name them a lot of them. Like a lot of people give me a lot of grief because I haven't named them. I'm <laughs> like, I'll, I'll get to it. I just need to think of good names for all of them <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. I, I like to let a good name come to me, but it, it is very satisfying uh, when, when you do finally choose names for them. Oh, maybe one of them, Zayori Jr., would be really good. <laughs> Little Zayori? Yeah, Little Zay Zayori Little. Light? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. No, I'm, 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 uh, I'm in. Um, Chuck, I want to wrap this thing up pretty soon here. I really appreciate your time and mm -hmm. all this great storytelling. You have, you have such a robust history, man. This has really been so incredible. Um, you know, you've been doing a lot of streaming. Uh, you know, you've been, I, I saw you've been playing some other games beside Axie, like a little Pokemon Unite. I've been playing oh, a little yeah. bit of that recently as well. Uh, it's certainly mm -hmm. a, a bit of good fun. I need to pop by your stream more often, but uh, any mm -hmm. leaks for us? Like anything, can, can you tease like what's coming up for uh, Chuck Fresco? Can you certainly like plug your streams and tell people where to find you? Um, oh, yeah. You know, are we going to yeah. see you streaming season 20, tearing up the leaderboards or what? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh not big things. We're just changing our scholarship to be more focused on acquiring more skilled players. Before the scholarship was more like more simple, the idea. But now we're going to try to actually go for more skilled players, not to the point of a professional guild, but we're moving in that direction. But if you want to find me, if you're looking, if you're a skilled player that's looking for a new opportunity or a different like uh, place to play, um, just follow me on twitch.tv slash Chuck Fresco. I'm also on YouTube, Twitch, I mean, YouTube dot slash Chuck Fresco or on Twitter where you'll hear, hear me talk about a lot of controversial things. Twitter, uh, with twitter.com slash Chuck Fresco. So that's just my, my, I got all the Chuck Fresco names for all of them. That's good. I, I love that when, uh, 
it all lines up. I, I've got the Zyori TVs everywhere. Back when I started, TV was hmm. the cool thing in esports, and now no, nobody does TV anymore. And I've thought about changing it, but it's a cool relic of the yeah. past. So mm-hmm. I, I like Chuck Fresco. It's a, a cool handle, and it, it is a good Twitter follower. A uh, follow, rather. Chuck is uh, definitely opinionated and not afraid to share those opinions with the world. And that's kind of what Twitter is all about. So uh, keep fighting the good fight, man. I love it. Before we end, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to do one last thing, please. Because I just wanted to give a shout out to my wife, Mrs. Fresco. Without her, uh, my like some some wives can be really against crypto, but I met like the perfect person for me to play Axie Infinity. Um, she definitely supports crypto. Her mind is very open to all these things. And the only reason I was even able to start my scholarship was because of Mrs. Fresco. So shout out to Mrs. Fresco. She always uh, is very supportive and is, is, is honestly been the greatest person for me. Dude, that's amazing. Uh, honestly, that's like that's what the community is all about. And I love hearing you know support stories like that of folks that aren't in in the space, but they're yeah. open to the space and they're supportive yeah. of it. And they recognize that even if they don't see it, you see it. Um, and that's just really incredible, man. It brings a smile mm-hmm. to my face. So Chuck Fresco, thank you so much. This was absolutely amazing. Um, looking forward to seeing everything you create. And when you win season 20, it will certainly bring you back for another episode of Axie 2. Tuesday. So until that time, so it's gonna bite me in the butt. <laughs> yeah. Take care, my friend, and uh, we'll see you in the future for sure. Yeah. Thank you.